Howdy folks, Dave here at the Thundermaker Workshop, where I'm testing out the new Creality Falcon 2 22 watt laser cutter engraver. Since I am so often asked about uh, designing custom laser cut structures and the materials I use, different machines that I use, I thought it would be helpful to do a few short videos that take you through the entire process from beginning to end. In this first video, look at the machine all set up. And then we'll work within a couple of different software programs to design our structure and send the files to the laser for cutting and engraving. But first, full disclosure, I did not purchase this Creality Falcon 2. It was sent to me for review. But since there is such a need for affordable laser cutting options, I thought I would give it a try and see if it might be a good choice for hobbyists. And you'll get my honest assessment of all the pros and the cons. My usual machine is a 50 watt CO2 laser cutter engraver. A great machine with tons of power. The Creality Falcon 2 will be my first experience with a diode laser machine. In the past I've been wary of diode lasers because they don't typically have the power of a CO2 laser. But the Falcon 2 seems to have solved that issue by grouping four diode lasers together to create 22 watts of focused cutting power. The setup instructions were clear and easy to follow and the machine went together and was ready to use in just a few minutes. A very handy item was this included SD card with USB adapter that contains PDF files for the operations manual, a sheet of recommended power and time settings for different materials, very handy, links and instructions for using the machine with Lightburn and other software programs, and even some test files for use with the generous packet of included cutting and engraving materials. I made good use of those materials getting the machine dialed in for my use. Since their setup instructions are quite thorough, I mean, there's even an instructional video included on that, uh, that SD card. I'm not going to go that in depth on the setup here. Uh, just point out some of the main components. Of course, you've got the main uh, cutting frame here. You've got the movement arm. You've got the laser cutting head. That's this bad boy right there. Uh, this comes with a uh, honeycomb tray uh, for cutting on and a metal plate to protect your work surface. Uh, this also has an air pump that uh, you hook up to it via the silicone hose. And the air pump, of course, keeps your work area clear and actually aids in the cutting uh, while you're running the machine. Another very important item that was included are these safety glasses. Be sure to understand and follow all of the safety procedures and precautions that come with your particular machine, your personal safety, and even your eyesight might depend on it. As you can see, they also sent me a cover and exhaust hood with a built-in fan. And this is a very important thing to have if you don't have some other way of moving the smoke out of your workspace. When this thing is cutting, it does generate some smoke and fumes, and you definitely want them vented out of your workspace and into the outdoors. With the setup all done, we can get to work now designing a model structure that we can make with the Creality Falcon 2. I'm just making some notes and doing a little sketching here at the studio for a structure I've been wanting to build for my ON18 Bandit Canyon Railway project. Etta's place will be a prominent structure on the layout with a typical Old West false front design and plenty of charming Victorian details. Okay, with a quick sketch done and all of the measurements made, I can take this to the computer now and design all of the parts that I'll need using my favorite vector art program, Adobe Illustrator. When designing for a laser cutter engraver, there are basically two different styles of uh, graphic formats that you need to deal with. Uh, raster graphics and or vector graphics. Now, a raster graphic is made up of pixels. That's what most of us are familiar with. A JPEG, for example, is made up of pixels. That's a good example of a raster graphic. Now, your laser cutter machine is going to read all of those pixels as dots and etch them accordingly. Now, no matter what kind of machine you have, a raster graphic can take a long time to engrave. Fortunately, in structure modeling, we're usually dealing with vector files. In fact, that's all that we're going to be using in this project. Vector graphics are simply mathematical formulas that describe the various endpoints of lines in space. Your computer translates them into lines that you can see, and the laser will read and cut or engrave them as lines, depending on the parameters you set up. 
but more on that in a minute. I prefer designing structures in Adobe Illustrator due to its wide range of powerful drawing tools and frankly because I'm familiar with it as a graphic artist. There are other vector drawing programs out there that you can use, and you can even design directly in Lightburn if you choose, though I personally find that to be a little cumbersome. I did a complete tutorial on designing structures with Adobe Illustrator, and you can find that at the link here or in the video description down below. Right now, let's take a look at how I break a structure down into its various parts to prepare for laser cutting. Okay, this is where things get interesting. I have a design I like, but now I need to translate that design into cuttable, buildable parts. Here's where it really helps to be familiar with the materials you'll be using. For this O-scale structure, as with most of my structures, I'll be using some 1 16th inch thick basswood, some medium density fiberboard or MDF of the same thickness, and some 25 one thousandths of an inch thick brown laser board. Knowing the thicknesses and cutting properties of these various materials will really help me in laying out the parts and deciding which parts get made out of what. If you're new to laser cutting, you might also want to check out my video on laser cutting materials, link in the description below. To make breaking the structure down into parts much easier, I designed it using layers, with individual layers roughly corresponding to the different materials that they will be cut from. Let's lay out all the basswood parts first so you can see what I mean. Hiding the other layers makes it very easy to see which parts belong in this grouping. I've already drawn the etch lines in RGB red, which is common practice, so now I need to indicate the cut lines with RGB blue so that the laser driver software can tell the difference between the two. Let me tell you, mixing up cutting and etching lines is a very common mistake. Now I need to create a new document that's about the same size as the actual material I'll be cutting. Then it's just copy and paste the parts to be cut and arrange them to make the most efficient use of the material. This is also the step where you need to pay very close attention to which way the wood grain on your material will be going. Ask me how I know. Since we'll be exporting this file to Lightburn, I also need to flatten the layers down into one, since Lightburn does not read AI file layers, only colors. It's also probably a good idea to indicate the line thickness as one one thousandth of an inch, and that will make it hard for you to see, but the laser driver will be able to read it just fine. Next, I save the file with a name that tells me what it is and what it should be cut from, and this makes life a lot easier. The same process is followed for all of the other parts that will be cut from different materials, but for now, let's skip ahead and open up our basswood file in Lightburn. A couple of great things about the Lightburn software. Uh, first, uh, it works with a wide array of machines and they're adding more all the time, both uh, CO2 and diode lasers. Uh, second, they offer a free 30-day trial, and it's the full version, no watermarks or anything. Free for 30 days, so you can really put it through its paces and see if the software is right for you. Oh, and there are versions available for uh, Mac, PC, and Linux. I don't have a ton of experience with Lightburn yet, but so far I like it very much as a laser driver, but not so much uh, for actual design. To import our file, I just need to go up here and click on the file folder to locate it, and make sure that all supported files is ticked so I can import the native Illustrator file. And there it is, and you can see the red etch and blue cut lines. And down here you can see there are many different colors that Lightburn can read, and each of those can be set up with different time and power parameters. The first thing I want to do is go over here to the Layers palette and move the red layer to the top, since it will tell the machine to cut the layers in descending order, and it's usually a good idea to do the etching first. For this project, I want to set the speed at 3,000 millimeters per minute for our red etch lines with a power setting of 30%. That's a little slower than their recommended parameters, but in my tests, that speed seemed to work better for etching. I also want to make sure that the air is turned off for etching, off completely, as that is recommended as well. For the blue cut lines, I want to set the speed at about 400 millimeters per minute and the power at 100%. Again, that's a little slower than the recommendations, but this is basswood plywood we're cutting here, and in my experience, just a little extra is needed for clean cuts in this material. Okay, we're just about ready to cut, 
But before I send the file to the machine, there are a couple more things I need to do. I've temporarily removed the cover so you can see everything clearly here, and I will put it back in place before we start cutting. Uh, first of all, we've got the, uh, the main power switch. need to flick that on. Then we have a safety key here. Uh, in case you've got children around the house, you don't want to mess them with your machine, you can uh, keep, keep it turned off with this. But we want to turn it on now. Get the, the, the happy noise and the indicator lights, all reading green. Air pump is good. A light burn says the machine is ready to go. And we just need to find where in this bed to put our material and you can just come over here and hit frame and you can see the uh, laser head will move so what it's doing is it's outlining the space it needs uh, to uh, to cut this particular file and it's basically right about in the center of that uh, cutting head box is where the outside line is going to be for your material. I'm going to place my basswood plywood sheet in within that frame. Uh, once again, making sure that the grain is going in the correct direction. Very important. And then I have this little tool right here, which is for adjusting the height of the cutting head. Just lay this down here on your material and adjust these thumb screws until it is sitting right on there and that will give you the correct height for cutting. Like that, I think we're good to go. Now, ideally you want to be cutting material that is completely flat but uh, you know we don't live in a perfect world <laughs> so this uh, basswood plywood has got a little bit of a bend to it in the middle so I'm just uh, taping it down flat as flat as I can get it with some duct tape. Put the exhaust hood back into place. Make sure the exhaust fan is on. All right. Say a quick prayer to the uh, laser gods and uh, off we go. we got. Well those look like some good usable parts to me. So now I just need to go through all the same steps for the other materials for the build. cut the MDF files next with a speed of 400 millimeters a minute and the power at 100%. And adjust the laser cutter height. Let's frame one more time. All right, let's see how we did. Nice, crisp, clean parts. Excellent. 
Now I can import the 25,000 laser board file. Let's just uh, put these layers in the order that I want. Move the etch up to go first. Blue cut line second, black cut line third. I added a black cut line, a third color, for an outer border to, uh, because I want all of these pieces to be on a card so I can, because they're small pieces, I'll be able to cut them off at the workbench when I uh, start building the model. 3,000 millimeters per minute, 30% power, no air. And for the cut, this is quite a bit thinner material. I think we can do 1,000 millimeters per minute at 100% power. Check our framing. I want to move this over just a hair. See what we got. A couple of small issues, but uh, no deal breakers. I was a little concerned about uh, how this laser would do with the kerf on these on these smaller parts, like these uh, window mullions. But it did a really nice job. The only uh, small issue that we had here is that even with the air assist turned up all the way, it still wasn't powerful enough to blow some of the small pieces out of the way. And so uh, the laser would get uh, caught on a scrap piece, not caught, but it would uh, the scrap piece would be on top and the laser wouldn't be able to cut all the way through. So I've got a little issue right there. I'm gonna have to clean up with a hobby knife. But other than that, not a bad set of parts. Well, there's one more piece I want to cut today, and that's a base for the structure. Uh, I wanted to try the uh, Falcon 2 out on something a little bit thicker, so I've got some nice uh, 1 8 inch thick MDF here that I'm going to use to make the base from. We'll see how it does on this. I'm going to err on the side of getting this all done in one pass. So I think we'll uh, do... 300 millimeters per minute and 100% power. Use the tool to make sure the cutter is at the correct height for this material. Home it and check the frame. Looks pretty good. Let's go for it. Fire in the hole. Well, did we get a part we can use? I believe we did. Just wanted to show you that's a that's a real nice cut too. Not a lot of charring. Not bad. I'll take it. Well, I'm sitting here now with a nice looking stack of laser cut parts all ready to go. And I, I realize this is where my build videos usually begin, but it's where we're going to have to wrap this one up for today. Uh, in the next installment, I will be putting Edda's Place together and we'll go back and probably uh, maybe cut a few more pieces uh, with the Creality Falcon 2. I must say I'm very pleasantly surprised with this machine. Uh, both with the ease of use and the quality of the parts I was able to produce. So my first impressions of the Creality Falcon 2 are overall quite positive. Uh, you know, if you are a hobbyist and you're not looking to spend uh, five to $8,000 <laughs> for a laser cutter engraver, just want something for your own personal use, you could really do a lot worse than this little machine right here. Uh, this one comes in at right around $1,200. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good buy for a laser cutter of this quality. There are a couple of small issues uh, that I have with it. Like uh, I, w I wish the, um, the adjustment for the height of the laser head was a little bit more precise. I wish the adjustment for uh, placing materials on the bed was a little bit more precise than just, you know, 
kind of guessing where <laughs> it's framing it in. That will actually lead to a lot of wasted materials, but I think uh, with use over time, you could probably uh, get pretty good at, at figuring that out. Uh, you know, I'll have a lot more to say about this machine uh, in a future installments, so uh, stay tuned for that. Until then, you can follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa, and you can find out all that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website at thundermesa.studio. And of course, if you really like what we're doing here at the channel and want to show your support, you can do what these nice folks did and head on over to patreon.com slash thundermesa and show your support there. Until next time! Keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.